Hey there, good evening. So today I wanted to talk about how to stop enabling your adult child who is an addict. And honestly, a lot of these strategies um, can work for any child really, um, but specifically when you need to be a little bit hard, when you need to play hardball um, for something like that, where they're, where they're an addict or something like that. So um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Sally Harris and I help uh, moms who have defiant adult children, I help them create a plan. I help them um, with with uh, techniques and strategies to provide peace and hope for the mom and for the mom to regain their own life back. Because I know firsthand how this can literally um, turn your life upside down. Um, it happened to me for nearly 10 years. Uh, so I definitely have been there. So when I speak all these things to you, it's because I have personal experience. Um, so at the end of the video, I will post a link to my free discovery call. It's a 30 minute discovery call um, where we'll deep dive into what's going on in your, um, in your family with your child and how it's affecting you as a mom. Okay, so um, I have five keys to success for this um, situation and because it is a hard situation, um, no doubt about it. And when everything's out of control, we need to, we need to create um, when everything's in chaos, we need to create control, right? Um, so number one is natural consequences. So some call it tough love and some call it natural consequences. And honestly, it's both. However, some of it is just complete natural. It happens to all of us. There's consequences for every action that we take. Same with you and I. Um, whatever decision we make, there's a consequence, right? Good or bad. Um, and so for our adult children who are addicted, it brings on a whole new dynamic. However, the natural consequences, so for example, if you stop going to work, you are not gonna have a job. That is a natural consequence, right? Um, if you break the law, you're going to end up in jail, okay? Um, not natural consequence. It starts when our kids are young, honestly. I mean, that's why we have a, a principal, that's why you have parents, all of that. So, um, so letting them lose a job if they're not going to work, Let, letting them sit in jail if that's where they end up, okay? I have never bailed my daughter out of jail, ever. Um, would not even consider it, and I'm actually really grateful that I made that decision a long time back because that is something that I know a lot of moms do, and they do it out of love because they love their child, um, but the child is not learning anything by, by that action, in my opinion. Um, in other words, another example would be if they don't pay their rent, they're not going to have a place to live. That's a consequence. It's a natural consequence of what happens when you don't do something you need to do. Okay, so um, that's number one. Number two is don't make excuses. So if, you've, if you're living in this situation, if you've ever found yourself making excuses at family events, why you know the son or daughter has not, not showing up or... Um, you know, things like that, whether it be holidays or whatnot. Um, the only exception to that, in my opinion, is if it's making your life easier at a specific event. For example, when my daughter got married, I had another daughter who was not with us at the time. And a lot of extended family and friends didn't really know what was going on in our life. And that really wasn't the place where I wanted to get into conversation about it. So prior to the event, I had a one-liner that I would say to anyone who asked where she was because it wasn't the place or the event, nor did I want to take my time on that special day to talk about that situation. So I had a one-liner. So that particular instance, it made my life easier, but day to day, stop making excuses for them, okay? Um, number three, finances. I know we talk about this a lot, but that's a huge issue for moms is providing cash, providing money. Um, stop paying their bills and stop giving them money. Um, we can't save them from their discomfort as much as we want to. Um, and I know we've talked about that a lot. Um, number four is avoiding conflict or not naming the addiction. We have to start calling it what it is. Um, the more we, t it's easier to tiptoe around because you walk on eggshells. That part's not easy. That part is stressful and then it will end up causing you harm in the long run. So really need to name it what it is. Let's just be honest. Um, we're, again, we're talking about an adult child. So you've got two adults here. We need to have an adult conversation. Not that it might, it might not look that way at first because they're definitely not going to want to admit that there's a problem. 
But at the same time, on your part as a mom, we need to name it what it is. Um, so dancing around the subject is not going to get anybody anywhere. So that's number four. And then <laughs> number five is um, going back on our word and that we need to stand strong. Um, failed boundaries hurt them as much as it hurts us, okay? It hurts us to enforce it because we're feeling bad. We're not wanting to um, upset the apple cart. Like, how are we just, we're getting along. Like, we don't want to upset that. But when we have to keep our word. And so many moms are afraid to keep their word for fear that their child's not going to talk to them or um, that something's going to happen to them and they would have had a bad you know, conversation right before then. There's just so much fear involved. And a lot of it's just, it's justified. I get it. Um, it's a very dangerous situation, obviously, but you, you need to keep your word because they're never going to take you serious if you're constantly not, not following through with what you said. Um, so we need to set the consequences. Um, like I mentioned in number one, we need to set those consequences, follow through <clears throat> with, you know, with clarity. So they understand, they need to know by creating that boundaries plan, they need to know exactly where they stand. Then you've done your job as a mom. Then it's up to them. Then it's the natural consequences will take place after that. Um, so I hope that helps. Um, I know it's a really tough situation to be in and, um, if, if you, any of you would like to have a conversation, I, I will put that link to my discovery call below um, just to see what's going on with you and your child and, and how it's affecting you as a mom. And I would love to help. So have a good evening. Thanks.